Singaporeans love seafood. But when it comes to fish, not all parts are loved equally. Would you know what's the best way to deal with the heads, guts, bones? You don't? Now, that's a food waste problem. According to experts, Singaporeans are buying lots of fish, but we're also wasting a huge chunk of it, up to 60% to be exact. Why is this so? I'm Isaac Henry, and I'm leading ordinary people on a zero waste journey to pick up hacks on how to cut down food waste. Got it. Zero waste cook-off start now. And compete in a cooking competition oh, it's very bad. to try and transform these into these. I won't waste it. You try to, try to roll, roll it out? Yeah. We're starting our journey in a kitchen where fish waste is common. Ah, what are you doing? It became messy. <laughs> Julie serves up the flavors of Indonesia through her home-based food business. This one is a kind of Indonesian fish cake, normally called pempek. Pempek is her top seller, and it comes in all shapes and sizes. Each batch requires at least five to six Spanish mackerels. I'm guessing this is basically the heads and bones, skins. I don't know what to do with this. What do you do? I just throw it normally, just these kind of things. I think you can definitely do find it. ways to make use of it yeah. in different ways. For our meal, Julie has prepared a fish feast, an assortment of fish cakes and shredded tuna with kaffir butter-flavoured rice. Amazing. So how do I eat this? Okay, for this, and then use this to cook the sauce. It smells really good. This is quite interesting. It's with the meatballs that we made earlier. With that is fresh cucumber, and it's finished off with this beautiful sauce that's like semi-sweet, a little bit spicy, and sour. sour. I think yeah. that's beautiful. Julie is a great cook. <laughs> no way. So I'm going to challenge her to see the value of fish in its entirety. So I'm really excited to see where this journey takes you. Yeah, me too. I hope to see new dishes being created. Yes. Even incorporated into your business, maybe? Yeah. Looks like Julie's on board. Hi. Next, I meet Hosanna, a seafood lover who really enjoys eating fish. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. So, wow. Yep. Whole fish. Whole fish. You said you like to eat fish. I usually cook fillets that's really like pre packet. Show, show you? me. Show me. I would love to see what you mean by already prepared for you. Ta da! <laughs> so this simple. Is, uh... Right? You just there, and then you just throw in, and then it's cooked. What is this? It's a cod. It is? Codfish. It says... It says cod! <laughs> Look above that. <laughs> oh my god! It's cod! It looks like cod! It says... It says Chilean cod. sea bass. You know, honestly, to me, they're just fish. I don't, I don't know what is, what, what is... Clearly, Hosanna has a lot to learn. I mean, this is a, this is a, a, a huge waste to the fish. Why? Because, so, for example, what happens to the bones, the head, the tail? of the fish. I don't know, I never think so much. Maybe my recipe, which utilizes an entire fish, will get Hosanna to change her mind. This is one of my go-to dishes when I want something quick and simple. First, I create a broth with the bones and the head. Then, I whip up a salsa with blood orange and herbs. As for the fillets, 10 seconds or so. Done. Fresh fish. Fresh fish. Wow. It was literally part of an entire carcass on a fish like an hour ago. You call this simple. This is bare minimum. 
I didn't even use the fish scales or the guts to create anything. I never knew that so much of the fish can actually be used, right? Like how he used the bones, even the fish head to make the stock and it tastes so amazing. Yeah, so good food takes time. Lah. It's worth the effort. Yeah. Both Julie and Hosanna are ready to start their zero waste journey. Our first stop is Atlas Aquaculture, one of nine land-based fish farms in Singapore. It's where I love to source my seafood. Okay, okay. so this is 100% sustainable land-based aquaculture farm. Actually, I'm very excited to show you guys this fish. So, so that me. fish over there, that's one of our giant groupers, also known as the Queensland groupers. How many times or how many months that you harvest once? We harvest three times a week. So oh, three times a week. week? On average, we do 75,000 kgs per year. Most of the fish they harvest are processed into fillets. How much of this actually goes into waste? Okay, so this is a portion of the processing waste that we have. Wow. Based on Victoria's beautiful. estimates, at least 40 to 50% of the fish gets discarded after processing. Oh my god, that's a lot of fish head. Yeah. That's about 30 tons of fish parts wasted a year. Oh yeah. This looks familiar. This, <laughs> this looks familiar. Yes. So this is one day of one specific fish. Exactly. This fish farm also facing waste problems. I just feel, oh, it's very sayang, you know. For a more hands-on experience, I've arranged for Hosanna and Julie to work on the catch of the day. This is Fish Appreciation 101. This is our red snappers, one of the most popular snapper fish in the family. You got it! <laughs> catch a really nice one. There's one right there for you. Oh, well done! <laughs> I got you. Bring it here. <laughs> wow. This is a really nice red one. Daniel Wee is a strong advocate of sustainable seafood. He has been in this business for nearly a decade. Fish filleting is easy, if you know the right techniques. So Daniel is giving a master class. I will remove the head first. I'll just slice it under the collar, twist it and it's off. So I'll slice from the top. That's why the head is removed. I'll cut off the ribs. So you do the trimming. And you got two. You mean any type of fish, we can do the same like this? Exactly. And also, every part of it can consume. Can it. be consumed. Yeah. This is the 50% that gets thrown away when only the fillets are consumed. The head bones, collar, gills, guts, and scales. This has somehow become a normality in the world of food, which is insane because this was something that was alive literally minutes ago. Shall we get started? It's flying everywhere. Let it fly. So I think like for me, I always buy fillet because it is convenient and because I didn't know how to fillet the fish myself. Belly. Yeah. Also, belly is only on one side of it. Because a lot of times when we eat food, right, we don't really think about the sauce, right? So, like, seeing how it's being ethically killed and it, it's, a, it's a life makes me think about how I want to you know, respect the food that I eat and not to waste food. But this lesson is far from over. So, this is basically all the waste <laughs> that you had from just now. Mm -hmm. We won't waste any of this. If you would like to do the honors of dropping it in the bowl, with your hands, Julie. <laughs> I just washed my hand. <laughs> I'm teaching them how to make garum. It's a fermented fish sauce that can only be made with bacteria found in fish guts. This is crucial as it kickstarts the fermentation process. Now we're going to add about 20% of salt. All you're going to do is give it a little massage so that all of it is incorporated in there. And now what you have to do is pack it pack it tight inside. The longer the mixture ferments, the richer it tastes. 
that liquid is just going to keep breaking down and down and down. This is homemade fish sauce. Could be your substitute for that common oyster sauce, soy sauce. This is my own garum that's been fermenting for approximately a month and a half, maybe. Nice smell. Yeah. Woo! Wakes you up, doesn't it? Julie and Hosanna are now well equipped to apply their newfound skills in the kitchen. So, how have you been? I'm good, I'm yeah. good. I can smell the curry. <laughs> I've arranged a cooking lesson with David Yip, chef and culinary consultant extraordinaire. We'll do the fish top. You feeling good? Yeah. We have to get the fish bones down. So what you do is that you can just chop it in huge chunks, just across, yeah. Doesn't matter what fish we use, right? Uh, any, uh, yeah, any, any type of yeah. fish. Okay, basically what we are doing today is we're going to use the lesser known parts of the fish, like fish maw, for example, fish scales, full of calcium, but again, we always discard them, mm. and of course, fish head as well. Mm. So, the three dishes will evolve around these three elements. Ooh. Yeah, nice. Yes. So you guys will learn how to really maximize the Everything. entire fish. Yeah, zero wastage. First, we start with a fish stock. Pan frying it, what you get is a very milky texture, which I like very much. Mm. Oh, wow. You see? See how thick? Not only is the broth milky, it's also nutritious, because fish bones contain calcium, zinc, magnesium, and omega-3. Next, we prepare the ingredients to make chawamushi or steamed egg. Let's get the fish pot out. It's actually more than just a fish stomach. It's actually it's an air bladder that keeps the fish afloat. Before we even cut it, we have to wash it thoroughly. The reason why I'm massaging is because to, so that the flour could stick to all the dirt and everything on the oh, surface. Okay. And when you rinse it, it will go everything along with it. How do you guys feel so far? I feel hungry. <laughs> I meant educationally, oh, you know. I'm not learning a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to make chawamushi, mix two parts water to one part egg. David is using fish stock in place of water and adding fish maw, fats, roe, and sperm. So after about 12 minutes of steaming, the chawamushi is ready. <laughs> For our next dish, we are going to fry up some fish heads. Get a good toss and put the, the fish head. You have to be fast. Yep. Now the fish head. Give a good toss as well. Mmm, smell nice. It smells Very good. Yeah, Give a good toss. Toss it already. Nice. <laughs> smells really good. Okay, our final dish. You guys can see the scales are already starting mm. to crisp up on the side. Always remember, skills are calcium. It cooks the fish at the same time, crisps up the shell to keep covering yep. layer after layer of really hot oil. And that basically shocks the, the shell into expanding mm -hmm. and almost provides a potato chip-like texture. Oh. Today, I learned something really inspiring for me. Normally, we fry fish, I always don't use the scale. But today, I learned, oh, actually the scale is quite tasty as well. It's just crispy, it's nice. Well, I mean, this looks amazing. Thank you. You did a great job. The challenge Does this flavour feels like very full? Mm -hmm. Very rich, very flavorful. And yet very light. Yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. Mm, yeah. It's, it's very light. It's very heavy. It's like smooth in the mouth, right? And one thing, the scale, mm. very crispy. This mm. is really nice. And we did it in a home kitchen, right? Yeah. Competition's coming up. Take some time, absorb all that knowledge in. Yeah. Do some R&D by yourselves. Yes. And we shall both see you very soon. It's been a few days since our contestants picked up fish cooking tips with Chef David. I think I've burned my fish. And they've been hard at work perfecting their skills. I'm eating my own food right now. I think it's really quite bad. 
Welcome to the Zero Waste Kitchen, where nothing gets wasted. And joining me in the kitchen are our guest judges, David and Daniel. So, Daniel, what do we have today? Today, I brought the star snapper. One unique feature about this fish is the white star on the top. I've got these little goodie parts for you as well. We've got some snapper bones, grouper heads, another bunch of assorted fish oh, wow. heads here. Remember, these fish are extremely fresh. Take mm. full use of it and extract all the flavours out. So, on your marks, get set, cook! Go, 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 go! Get it? <laughs> yeah. We're giving Hosanna and Julie two hours so they can whip up as many dishes as they can with an entire fish. My hands are literally shaking. I'm nervous. I'm getting nervous. They will be judged on creativity, appearance, taste, and most importantly, the amount of fish waste left at the end of the cook-off. Hosanna has decided to serve fish collar and filet with scales intact over a bed of mashed potatoes. So guys, what are you expecting? David? Well, for me, the important part is I really want to see how they make full use of the whole fish. I'm going to roast the bones. Once I roast the fish, I'm going to prepare the stock. Today, I'm going to make, uh, I think, two dishes. One Western, one Eastern. For her first dish, Julie is creating a custom seasoning with fish bones and scales. This will garnish the fillets that she's planning to fry. You're going to make bone powder. I thought you were going to blend it, no? No, must, must dry first. After dry it first in the, in the oven, after that, blend it, become powder. Normally, I just use the fish meat. Chef David also giving me another idea to use the bone to turn it into powder. This one is I made from fish bones. You only have about 55 <laughs> minutes left. I'm, I'm very stressed because I don't know whether I've got enough time. I need to finish my mash, which obviously I'm not done yet. Um, I need to fry my fish, which I'm going to do now. And then I need to prepare my stock. Hosanna also brought the garam we made together a week ago. <gasps> Finally. I thought you'd never use it. Instead of using salt to flavour my stock, I'm going to use this. Yeah, because it's really, really nice and tasty. Is it hot enough? So I'm going to fry it with the scales on, make it crispy. Wow, you guys are cooking your fish so early. Yeah. They still have some time. You know that, right? There's still a lot of things that are missing. Everything. But then I'm guessing your fish is going to be really cold by the time you serve us oh, in 30 oh. minutes. We heat up again. <laughs> You'll heat the fish up again. <laughs> Your butter is starting to burn. Yeah. As long lower as you, you can lower smell. Lower the heat, lower the heat. Getting too hot. Lower the heat. Yeah, it's burning. Oh my god, I smell the burn. I'm, I'm nervous, David. Actually, from the fish, I want to fry it to like Indonesian but Chinese combination like uh, dish. I changed in the last moment to save time. So it's not bad. It's uh, only the gills, really, and a little bit of the gallbladder, which is fine. Everything else you've used. I'm impressed with the little food waste that Julie has, but that could be because of the odd choice she made for her second dish. And you're making a chawamushi with fish head. Yeah. <laughs> How is it, Julie? Not really dry, but it's okay. You have about 15 minutes more. You guys should be doing your last bits here and there. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, deal, deal. Five, four, three, <laughs> two, <laughs> one. Time's up. Well done. Good job. Good job. Hi, Hi. judges. Hosanna is serving a pan-fried fish collar and filet with scales on, laid over a bed of mash and drizzled with sauce made from fish stock and garum. I've called it golden summer. 
So I've used every part of the, of the fish. So first I roasted the bones and the head, and then I used the fat to fry the fish. If this is the only food waste that you've created, I think she's done a great job. Yeah. Julie, please. Wow, that's a lot oh. of food. Julie has prepared two dishes, a steamed egg with fish head and a pan-fried fish fillet with her own seasoning. Got the fish scale Crispy. and have the fish bone powder. Okay. Yeah. Fish bone powder. Yes, the bone from the stock. I mean, the residue of the stock I didn't throw away. So that when I make it dry. Well, I think it could be a very nice seasoning. Well done on your food waste. Bon appetit, guys. I'm pretty excited. Really start with golden summer. I love the sauce. I could taste the, the, the fish fat in it. I think it's a very Hosanna dish. Overall, I thought, not bad. Shall we give Julie's a try now? I'm curious how this is going to turn out. Mm. The face is gorgeous. Overall, mm. not my favorite flavor, mm. though. Dumping an entire fish head in here <laughs> in a steamed egg dish makes it so hard to really enjoy the entirety of the fish Ooh, head. Right. Shall we give her main course a try? I like that she tried her best to maximize the yield of the fish. She fried the scales. And it's good, it's crispy. Yeah? Mm, very crispy. The fish is nicely cooked. Yep, yep, yeah. I think we have a winner. Mm. Ladies, if you would like to join us, how do you guys feel? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Glad it's like, oh, the hard part is over. I think you guys both contributed to using as much of the fish as possible. And I think that was in itself a victory. Three of us did enjoy the, the finishing. And the winner of the cook-off zero waste competition is... Hosanna! <laughs> I won. I'm still glad that, you know, the hours that I put into practice, it was worth it. You got it! After going through the zero waste journey, I realised that with the skills I have to be able to fillet it properly, I can just get any fish and do it. And also, honestly, whole fish tastes so much better than the fillet. Fresh fish. So never going back. <laughs> Although I'm not winning this competition, I'm winning different things. Yes, teamwork. That is learning something new.